Today we're unboxing the Siphene 3301 Slow Masticating Juicer. We'll go over the juicer's parts, the assembly, we'll show it extracting pulp and juice, and the removable parts are dishwasher safe. Welcome to Eclectic Ideas. Here's the user manual and the recipe guide. In the user manual, we're cautioned against feeding the juicer sugarcane, mango, or guava. So slow masticating juicers extract and separate all the juice from the pulp. And in here you can see all these different recipes to extract the nutrients and the vitamins from the juices. You can even put the pulp into some of the recipes like these bars here and some of the omelets. That sounds like a good thing for me. I don't want to lie to you. The juice is not going to taste that good at first unless you just love the taste of raw vegetables. I don't. I like my vegetables cooked with bacon or butter. So I'm going to start slow and I'm going to be patient and have the occasional celery juice and just start being a little healthier on a gradual level. Without further ado, let's get into the components of this slow masticating juicer. Here is the cleaning brush. Here is the push rod to push the vegetables into the auger. Here is one of the two cups. One is larger than the other one. So one's gonna be for pulp, one's gonna be for juice extraction. Here's the hopper, it's upside down. This is where the produce goes in. And this is the unit itself. It's very, it's very lightweight. It's very sleek looking. It doesn't take up much counter space and it's about the right size for a cup of juice. All our components are unboxed. So the main component here is the hopper and here's our unidirectional flow control valve. Shut it, it's off. Open it, it flows. And here is our mesh strainer and that's going to separate the pulp from the juice. The hopper is turning its upright position where the will feed the produce through the chutes. And this is the push rod. And there's a groove on this side so you can't get the direction wrong. And you just feed it through the chute and push the, push the produce in this way. Being careful not to use too much force when you're pushing the produce into the auger. Next, I wanna show you the function of the juicing body cover here at the end. There is a method to the madness here. You pull this out. That's the fine mesh strainer there. That's the attachment. Here is the auger itself, and that comes out so you can wash it. This sleeve, it's a sleeve that just slides over the auger, like so. And when you look at this, there is, if you can see right here, there is a little square and a triangle. The arrow shows the direction. And on the juicing body cover here, there's a red, a red dot. That dot lines up with the square, and you just twist it in manually like that. Now the produce hopper is assembled, and we need to attach the hopper to the juicing unit. We have a locking mechanism and a red release button on the body of the unit and we have a groove on the hopper that fits into this. There's the groove and it's going to go right here. So if you're looking at a clock face it would be like to rotate your hopper to like two o'clock. Push it in gently and twist up to noon if you were looking at a clock face. Now our unit is assembled and ready to extract some juice. Here are our two juice cups. You'll notice that this one is large and won't go under, so there's no confusing it. That is our pulp extractor. This one is smaller and it fits right under the juicing assembly, like that. We've washed the hopper and the cups in warm soapy water and we're ready to edge to the veg. Here's our celery. We're going to chop it up into very small pieces and feed it through this very short chute. So we're gonna take small pieces of celery because we didn't realize that you can actually put big pieces in the back, but whatever you put in, you're gonna to wanna to push down into the auger gently with this push rod. Slow masticating juicers actually extract the juice a little more slowly. Now, if for some reason you want to have celery juice before you get ready for work in the morning or you're at a time crunch, you may want to go ahead and pre-prep all your vegetables and chop them up into a tray before you are ready to feed because it's going to save you a lot of time if they're washed and prepped. To reduce the risk of shock, the manual asks us to use dry hands to turn on or reverse the unit. So here we were putting these long stalks in and that's a little weird. So we chopped them up some more and if you'll notice, this, the juice starts to come out the wrong spigot and that is because I forgot to open the flow control valve. So that's important in computer science or, you know, our juicing. So that's a little lame IT joke there. But anyway, so we used six stalks of celery and it actually yields about a half a cup or 118.2 milliliters of juice and about an equivalent amount of pulp, as you can see here. So it's doing a great job of just 
really crunching through those celery ribs and we're getting a beautiful glass of celery juice and it tastes a lot like celery juice but it the machine is great the machine is not responsible for the taste <laughs> just pushing down gently here so you can see that in action and we're approaching our half cup level so there's our six stalks worth of celery juice let's turn off the flow control valve so that we don't have any leaks and we'll pour it up here and taste it which I've already told you it tastes like celery juice and here's the confirmation that it really is half a cup or 118.2 milliliters so there we go and there's our delicious shredded pulp and we're gonna move on to carrots let's fire up the unit again we're gonna extract the juice from 12 baby carrots I'd say they're medium-sized baby carrots and see what we get and if you don't put the pulp container under it you will get pulp on your counter okay here it's beginning to struggle a little bit with the carrots going into the auger so we're just going to use our deluxe push rod to shepherd those puppies into the auger so now we have enough pulp for maybe a carrot cake or the compost pile or you could just eat them because that's actually that tastes really good I highly recommend the carrot juice before you go to work so there's the pretty liquid right there and let's go to apples about three medium-sized apples we're going to chop up and see how it works it did recommend actually using a very crisp apple for this this is not it's a gala apple I don't think it's all that crisp and I think it's a little sitting on the shelf a little bit so it may be a little bit mealy let's see how it works we're just gonna feed it through as we have the other juices and flip it on and let's see what we get I didn't clean the hopper in between because I really wasn't that concerned about the carrot and apple juice going together. I thought it would taste nice. Anyway, so it seems to be juicing it. Um, it does get a little mushier, but it's taking it nicely and it's giving us apple juice and pulp. So, I mean, this would be great for your apple cinnamon cake. Okay, I deliberately tried to fill the hopper really full and it's getting a little bit backlogged and it's mushing up in the thing, but I mean, it's nothing serious. We'll just keep doing this until we get the result we want. And it seems like a really sturdy little juicer. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Now see, it's making it kind of apple saucy here. So let's reverse it and see if reverse actually helps turn it out. There it goes in reverse. And we're just gonna get our juice through. I don't think you're supposed to reverse it and push. I think I did that wrong, but anyway. But we're, you know, it's making our juice. So the yield for the apple juice is just a little more than half a cup. And the same for the pulp as well. It has a more apple saucy taste than like you would get at the grocery store. It's not as fine strained, but it's nice. Very tasty. Unless you hate apples, I think you'll like it. And it mixes quite well with the carrot juice. Here's the half cup of pulp that apples yielded for your apple cake. And now we're on to the cucumbers. I did wince the hopper for this because I thought the juice would probably taste quite different. I'm expecting more of a celery-like taste, but here we go. We're on a full-on juicing expedition, so we're not stopping now. The bright colors and hues of the juice are preserved in a slow masticating cold press juicer. So that's really nice that they stay very pretty and bright. Let's see how much we yield from this. It's looking like we're going to yield almost exactly the same amount, a half cup of juice and pulp. And I think the fact that it's extracting the same amount of pulp and juice really shows that it's extracting quite efficiently. You're pretty much getting the max yield out of your, your produce. So if you really prefer, or think you might prefer, juicing over eating them whole sometimes, here you go. This could be perfect for you. It's a, it's a solid, affordable juicer, and it's a great way to pulverize veggies and load up on nutritious, antioxidant, and vitamin-rich juice conveniently without taking up much of your counter space. Get maximum extraction affordably with the Siphene SIF 3301. Thanks for watching, and here's to your health. Bye-bye.